He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. And I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Oh, I like that zippy little one. We will be reading that today on this October 22, and that is the beginning of Psalm 91. Oh, a psalm that you need to know, you need to be very familiar with. You can read Psalm 91 and put your name in all those places that the blessings are being stated and given out. I guarantee you, you do that, on a day when you feel like and you will be lifted up because his word is rich it's alive it's powerful it's true hallelujah to the lamb welcome to everybody on this beautiful brand new day I don't know about you but it's still darker than dark outside but God's light is beginning to peek through Oh, he is faithful. He is faithful, isn't he? And on this day, we will be reading Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 39 through 41. Chapter 39 through 41. And I have one of my favorite cups. If you've not seen this before, is this not the most beautiful thing? It starts at the top with George Washington. And every single name of every single president, they got on here. Can you imagine that? Ending with the best president the U.S. ever had, Donald John Trump. Hallelujah. I will take a sip on that. So let us see. This chapter today... I should say chapters. It is so rich and wonderful because the nation ends up with the terrible, terrible prophecies that the Lord said he was going to do if you did not repent and obey me. But here is the enemy caring for Jeremiah, caring for him. His own Jewish people treated him like, mm, Fill in your own word. Put him in the dungeon to sink in the mire. And they would have been real happy to leave him there and die. Let him just get up to where he had to go gulp, gulp. But God rescued him. But where do, where do you hear how wonderfully they treat him? All right. Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 39. I hope you have your Bible and a nice morning beverage Let's get filled up. In the ninth month of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, the city was penetrated. Can you imagine all the people inside listening for over a year while they hear their enemy outside working their way up and over and in? And then all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate. The new owners, right? Nirgal Sherazar, Samgar Nebo, Sher Shakim, Rabsuris, Nergal Sheratzer, Rabmach, 
with the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. So it was when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and all the men of war saw them that they fled. They could have obeyed and not had all this, but now they've got it. They fled, and they went out of the city by night by way of the king's garden, by the gate between the two walls. And he went out by way of the plain, but the Chaldean army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had captured him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah, in the land of Hamat, where he pronounced judgment on him. Oh my goodness, wait till you hear this terrible story. And then the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes in Riblah. The king of Babylon also killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. And how many times did Jeremiah tell him he was going to get carried off to Babylon if he didn't repent? And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. And then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive to Babylon the remnant of the people who remained in the city and those who defected to him with the rest of the people who remained. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left in the land of Judah the poor people who had nothing. How about that? Isn't that something? And gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look after him and do him no harm. But do to him just as he says to you. How about that? We're talking about the enemy. They carried everybody else off. But look at the mercy of the Lord. And, he, and the, the instructions are, do whatever he says. Amazing. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent Nebuchadnezzar, Rabsuris, Nergal Sherazer, Reb Mug, Meg, Reb Meg, and all the king of Babylon's chief officers. Don't you love the way I whip these names out? <laughs> oh my goodness. And then they sent someone to take Jeremiah from the court of the prison and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahak Ahikam the son of Shapan, that he should take him home. So he dwelled among the people. And that must have been what Jeremiah wanted, because the orders were, do whatever he says to you. Meanwhile, the word of the Lord had come to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, go and speak to Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for adversity and not for good. And they shall be performed in that day before you. Oh, he got to see it all, didn't he? But I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. How about that? For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword, 
but your life shall be as a prize to you because, and here's the whole reason, and the, all the rest of them could have done this, right? Because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. Oh, what a great reminder for you and me on this day. Just keep putting your trust in the Lord. Look at there. This man was spared from being murdered with the rest of them. We move right along to chapter 40. Chapter 40 of Yermiahu. The word that came to Yermiahu from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him bound in chains among all who were carried away captive from Jerusalem and Judah, who were carried away captive to Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said to him, the Lord, just listen to this. The Lord your God has pronounced this doom on this place. I mean, they know it. And they're saying it. God pronounced it, so we did it. Now the Lord has brought it and has done just as he said. And here's the reason. Because you people have sinned against the Lord and not obeyed his voice. Therefore, this thing has come upon you. And now look, I free you this day from the chains that were on your hand. If it seems good to you to come with me to Babylon, come and I will look after you. Look at that. The choice is up to the man. How about that? If it seems good to you to come with me, okay, I'll take you with me. In other words, here we go with the, with the uh, opposite choice. But if it seems wrong for you to come with me to Babylon, remain here. See, all the land is before you. Wherever it seems good and convenient for you to go, go there. Wow. I've never heard the enemy, the victory, talking like this before, have you? Now, while Yermiahu, Jeremiah, had not yet gone back, Nebuzaradan said, Go back to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon has made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people. Or, get this, or go wherever it seems convenient for you to go. So the captain of the guard gave him rations and a gift and let him go. And then Yermiahu, Jeremiah, went to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people who were left in the land. And when all the captains of the armies who were in the fields, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, governor in the land, and had committed to him men, women, children, and the poorest of the land who had not been carried away captive to Babylon. Then they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, son of Nerthaniah, Yonatan, and Yonatan, the sons of Kiriah, Seriah, the son of Tanhumet, the sons of Ephi, the Netophahite, and Yezaniah, the son of a Mahathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, took an oath before them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. How wonderful. As for me, I will indeed dwell at Mizpah and serve the Chaldeans who come to us. But you, 
gather wine and summer fruit and oil, put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews who were in Moab, among the Ammonites in Edom, and who were in all the countries, heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, then all the Jews returned out of all places where they had been driven, and they came to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah at Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruit in abundance. Moreover, Yohanan, the son of Keriach, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. And they said to him, Do you certainly know that Balis, the king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, to murder you? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, did not believe them. And then Yohanan, the son of Kiriach, spoke secretly to Gedaliah in Mizpah, saying, Let me go, please, and I will kill Ishmael, the son of Nataniah, and no one will know it. Why should they, he murder you? So that all the Jews who are gathered to you would be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, said to Yohanan, the son of Kiriah, You shall not do this thing, for you speak falsely, falsely, concerning Ishmael. Oh, this man apparently is so kind and good, he can't believe anybody would do harm. And we move along to chapter 41 with the sad truth, the sad truth. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nataniah, the son of Elashima, the royal family and of the officers of the king, came with ten men to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, at Mishpah. And there they ate bread together in Mishpah. Uh, this is how evil and hard the heart. Listen to this. They sit down and they eat with him. And then Ishmael, the son of Netaniah, and the ten men who were with him arose and struck Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword and killed him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also struck down all the Jews who were with him, that is, with Gedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans who were found there, the men of war. And it happened on the second day after he had killed Gedaliah, when as yet no one knew it, that certain men came from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, 80 men, 80 men with their beards shaved and their clothes torn, having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. Now Ishmael, the son of Nataniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went along. And it happened as he met them that he said to them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. Ahikam. What a liar. What a murderous actor. An actor with murder in his heart. So it was when they came into the midst of the city that Ishmael, the son of Netaniah, killed them. All of them and cast them into the midst of a pit, he and the men who were with him, 
But ten men were found among them who said to Ishmael, Do not kill us, for we have treasures of wheat, barley, oil, and honey in the field. So he desisted and did not kill them among their brethren for these things that he wanted to eat. Now the pit into which Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah was the same one, Asa, we would say Asa, Asa, the king, had made for fear of Baasha, king of Israel, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, filled it with the slain. And then Ishmael carried away captive all the rest of the people who were in Mizpah, the king's daughters, and all the people who remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. And Ishmael, the son of Nath Nathaniah carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. But when Yohanan, Yohanan, the son of Kiriah, and all the captains of the forces that were with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, had done, they took all the men and they went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Netanya, and they found him by the great pool that is in Gibeon. So it was when all the people who were with Ishmael saw Yohanan, the son of Kiriah, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, they were glad. And then all the people whom Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah turned around and came back. Well, praise the Lord. And went to Yohanan, the son of Kiriah. But Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, escaped from Yohanan with eight men and went to the Amorites. And then Yohanan, the son of Kiriah, and all the captains of the forces that were with him took from Mishpah all the rest of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, after he had murdered Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. The mighty men of war and the women and the children and the eunuchs whom he had brought back from Gibeon. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chimham, which is near Bethlehem, as they went on their way to Egypt because of the Chaldeans. For they were afraid of them because Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, had murdered Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor in the land. <clears throat> And we don't have any more mention uh, in that last part of Jeremiah, do we? He must be just settled down where he is. All right, y'all, we move right along. I mean, my goodness. Could you take all that in? That was really something. Ah, Connie says not coming through here. Hmm. Got it restarted. Praise the Lord, Connie. So sorry that you've missed some of that. Well, you have the word in your hands. You will read it. We move right along now to 2 Timothy 1. 2 Timothy 1. We're beginning this new second letter here from Timothy. <clears throat> no, from Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, a beloved son. Isn't that beautiful? Grace, 
mercy, and peace. Oh my goodness, we're finally reading words like this after all that murder. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Isn't that beautiful? Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. That happened. For God is not. Here's one of my favorite scriptures. And I know it's, it, it's favorite with, with many of you. And Kathy has found such beautiful graphics to put this scripture before us. This is one we need to memorize for sure and remind ourselves when hard things in life come along. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, who gave it to us? There's only one rascal left, right? So don't let Satan put the spirit of fear on you. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Oh, Cindy, that's a sweet story you're giving us there. But has now been revealed. Oh, hallelujah, it's been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death. Don't forget that. He has abolished death. You just pass from here to heaven. Like opening up a door and walking through. You keep on living. That's the death. Who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Capital D on day, judgment day, in other words. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Anisiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me. 
The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day, in that judgment day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, we have a little peek into all that happened during that time. We move right along to Psalm 90. <clears throat> Tehillim, Tehillim. Psalm 90, a prayer of Moshe, Moses, the man of God. Ooh, the words of Moses, good. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all our generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Wow, that sounds like Moshe, doesn't it? You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like asleep. In the morning they are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up and in the evening it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you our secret sins in the light of your countenance for all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years and if by reason of strength they are 80 years in all, I, that means a lot to me, <clears throat> God gave me strength up to 82 now. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. Unfortunately, that's a pretty true statement. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Mmm. I fly away, oh glory. Yes, I fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. To teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. Oh, Satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Oh, Kathy has a beauty of this lady. She has her hands up in the air. So beautiful. Establish the work of our hands, Lord. And we move right along to this glorious, glorious Psalm 91. He who dwellest in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. 
surely he shall deliver you. And, you know, you can say, surely he shall deliver Jane from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And I believe that. I believe these words for this day. This day. I'm not masking up my mouth and I'm not walking around out there in fear of this plague. I refuse to do it. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. See right there, it says, don't be afraid. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Oh, these are words for y'all. Take them in. <clears throat> Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Well, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus I mean, when we go to go out our front door, we should say, come on, I need a whole band of angels to go with me. Come on, y'all. Go in front of me, behind me, beside me, with me. Get your hands ready to bear me up. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Oh, there's a promise for you. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. And there again, I mean, you know, you can say, uh, Kip Diego, Kip too is watching. Kip Diego, he shall... You should call upon him. You should call upon Jesus, and he will answer you. He says, I will be with you, Cindy, in trouble. I will deliver you, Miss Sharon. Honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, these are shouting words, y'all. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you ought to have the corner of this page turned down a little so that any time you're in some kind of attack, you can just turn right there and you can just pray this out loud and you just send, send those demons and devils flying away. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. I'm excited. All right, y'all. We will wrap it up here with Proverbs chapter 26, the first and second verses. Proverbs 26. As snow in summer. We're not really crazy about having snow in summer, are we? Or rain in harvest. Oh, that's the worst. They're going to cut down the harvest, and it's going to be all wet. And it will risk mildew and mold. As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a flitting sparrow. Oh, Kathy's got a beauty of that. A 
sparrow just flying along there with wings out. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow. So a curse without cause shall not alight. And I, I like the, trans, the translation that says, an undeserved curse is of none effect. None effect. So a curse without cause shall not alight. In other words, it shall not settle on you. An undeserved curse is of none effect. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Wow. Powerful, powerful words from our Heavenly Father today. Wow. Do you feel all built up? I sure do. Wow. Bring on the day, Lord. Bring it on. Father God, we come to you in prayer. We come to you, Lord, as your sons, as your daughters. We know that you love us. You, we can just tell all kinds of testimonies through our life of how you've blessed us and loved us and redeemed us and delivered us. and Just your mercy, your grace, it's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. We embrace you again on this day. We thank you for a brand new day. We ask, Lord, that you show us and that you, <clears throat> you send angels along with us. Please, please send angels along with each and every one. Let them be of great help to us. Father God, Father God, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We hold up Israel, Lord. We hold her up to you and we hold up your people. And Father God, we pray as you have instructed us, you have asked us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem. And we do, Lord, we do. We pray for her peace. We pray for peace for the people. No fear, but peace. Hallelujah, Lord. Give wisdom today, please, Lord, to the governing body that you have set in office, the Knesset. Give them wisdom. Let them, Lord, find your will and perform your will, whether they know it or not. Bring many more today, Lord, home to make Aliyah and live on the land. Lord, I hold up America to you. <clears throat> Father God, you are, you are using a lot of evil people and a lot of evil things to open up eyes, the eyes of our people. A lot of them have believed that evil uh, was a good thing in the people that they voted for. And then there was the great fraud and cheating. I believe that with all my heart. It's being proved all the time. Father God, we know that you can turn anything around. And you have purposes right now for things the way they are. And so we rejoice. We rejoice in them. We rejoice in this day. And we say, Lord, have your way. And Lord, please keep us in a repentive attitude. We choose to do that because it's really, we need to do that ourselves. But Lord, it's the encouragement of your Holy Spirit that helps us to stay humble, to stay repentive, to look for your will, to look for your works that you would have do, that your kingdom would be built up this day because of our attendance in it and our obedience. Cause us, Lord, to be obedient. We give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, there are many who are ill. Many are being prayed for. Many are being lifted up who have all kinds of problems. Lord, we're asking you to hear, please, all the prayers of your sons and daughters and those seeking you. Hear them all, Lord, and bring great answers. And we will give you all of the praise, all of the glory. We lift you high, Lord. 
Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so we lift you up, Lord, that you might draw all men and women and children unto you. Be blessed this day, every one of you. I proclaim a blessing upon you. Receive it and be filled with joy. Let it be your strength. And have a beautiful day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Love you so much. Bye-bye.